Hello and welcome back to my channel, Craft Time by Casey. I am Casey and today this is the necklace that I will be making. Most of the components of this necklace came from Dee Dee's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of September 2022. And I have to say, I am super happy with how this necklace came out. I absolutely love this pendant with that black onyx right in the center of it. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. If you are interested in checking out Dee Dee's Deluxe Bead Box, I will have all of the information in the description box below. And if you do decide to go to the website, make sure that you use my code. My code is Casey15, Casey15. Remember I spell my name just a little unique. That's K-A-S-I-1-5. That will give you 15% off your first order and it applies to about 90% of the website. It does not apply to the deluxe bead box because it is already discounted so far. So if you are curious to see how this necklace came about, then stay tuned. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the tools that I will be using. I have two sets of chain nose pliers and one set of round nose pliers and one set of cutters and I have one set of crimping pliers. And I do want to briefly mention my tool set. In my opinion, this is a very high quality, very well made tool set. It is called Casual Comfort. And I highly recommend this set. One of the biggest things for me, other than it being so high quality, is just as the name suggests, it is very, very comfortable to use. A lot of times in stores, you will see tools that are, for whatever reason, have very, very small grips and they definitely function. But when I found this tool set and I saw how comfortable it was to use, I just can't imagine using anything else. And even if you don't get this tool set, I just recommend investing in your tools. If you make jewelry, it is just worth it in my opinion. And I will have my tool set linked in the description box below along with everything else in the video that I used that did not come from the bead box. I will also be using 49 strand bead along wire and I'm going to be using it in the color bright, which is this silver color. And I always get the 100 feet um, just because I go through it so quickly. Now, as far as the beads that I'm going to be using, I will be using the 8 millimeter Red Coral Jasper beads. And I will be using the 6 millimeter Natural Red Line Jasper beads. And the 4 millimeter Black Strawberry Shape Faceted Crystals. And the focal piece of this necklace will be this 60 millimeter wide antique silver black onyx chandelier pendant. I just think this is absolutely beautiful and I'm very excited to use it today. And I'm going to be using the bonus item that came in the box, which is this fancy hook clasp. I will also be using this 10 millimeter antique silver twisted soldered ring. And the last thing that I will be using from the bead box are the antique silver filigree flower bead caps. So everything else that I will be using is from my own stash. Of course, I have one eye pin here and I have some uh, ball head pins over here. And I will be using these black four millimeter pearl beads. And I will be using this Rolo chain. And I have two three and a half inch sections of chain right here. And then I have two sections of chain right here that are seven links of this chain. Now, this chain is the Rolo chain that I purchased from Amazon. It comes wrapped around right here, just like this, and I've already used quite a bit of it and I have this much left. I absolutely love it and recommend it. And then of course the findings, I have um, some different size jump rings and crimp tubes, wire guardians, uh, crimp covers, all came from my own stash. All right, now let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is embellish the pendant. I'm going to have something hanging from each pendant and then I'm going to have something going across the middle of the pendant. So here we go. I'm going to start with the piece that goes across. 
So I'm gonna use this eye pin. All right, so this is the order. I have my four millimeter uh, pearl beads on either side, two bead caps, and one of the eight millimeter beads in the center. So now I have one loop. I'm gonna create the loop on the other side. And when I create these loops, I want them facing the same direction. So I'm gonna have this going up and down and place it on my middle finger right there. And I'm gonna hold the beads I'm gonna go in with my round nose pliers just above this top bead, just like that, and then bend it, just like this. And then I'm gonna bend it back with my fingers. And you have the beginning of a nice loop. I'm gonna go in with my cutters. And before I close this, I'm gonna take one of those small lengths of chain, and I'm going to connect it to the last link just like that. And then I'm gonna go in and close that loop, just like that. And then on the other side, I'm going to open the end of that just a little bit, and I'm gonna connect that other last link of the small length of chain, just like that. And then I'm gonna close that back up. All right, so now we have this put together with the lengths of chain on either side, just like this. So now, to connect it to either side, I'm gonna take one of my jump rings and open it and connect it to one end of the pendant. I'm gonna connect it to the other last link on one side, just like that. And then I'm going to close the jump ring. Then I'm going to get the other jump ring, open it, and I'm going to start it with the other last link in the chain just like that and connect it to the other loop in the pendant and then close that jump ring. All right, so now you have this hanging across the top of the pendant, just like that. So now we're gonna create each one of the pieces that are hanging off. We'll start with the one that's in the center. So we're gonna get a, a ball head pin and Sometimes they come a little wonky, so you can straighten it out just a little bit. And then we're gonna be using this strawberry beads. So just like that, and if you'll notice, the strawberry beads, the smaller edge is, is facing out in both directions. So the larger end of the strawberry bead is up against the eight millimeter Jasper bead. So with the ball end, the ball head pen, you don't have to worry about what direction the loop is facing. So I set it on my finger and I go in with my round nose pliers just above the top bead, bend it, bend it back with my fingers, go in with my cutters. And then before I close it, this eight millimeter bead is the largest one and it's the one that goes in the center. If you notice there's seven loops on this pendant, so it's going to go in the center one, so there's three still on either side. And then I'm gonna go in with my round nose pliers and close that loop, just like that. So now we have this center one hanging off. So now all of the other six are going to be the same, so we will make one together. So the same way, you have a ball head pin and you have the strawberry beads where the small side is pointing out and the Larger end is up against the bead. Go in with your round nose pliers just above, bend it, bend it back with your fingers, go in with your cutters, and then you can put it on the outside loop of the pendant and close the loop, just like that. So now we have those two and we're gonna create the exact same thing with the smaller bead on all of the other ones. So we're gonna create one, two, three, four, five more and put with the smaller bead and put them on every other one and we will meet back up once we have them all together. All right, so here is the pendant all finished. So now we're gonna work on the parts of the chain. So I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so I have a piece of wire um, it's roughly about nine inches long um, because you need enough space on either end to um, close it off. All right, so the first end, I'm going to put on a crimp tube 
a jump ring and put my wire through one end of the wire guardian and then wrap it around and put it through the other end. You want to make sure you get the um, jump ring up in the middle of the ends of the wire like that in the guardian wire and then you want both ends of the wire to go through the crimp tube and I'm going to close that guardian wire with my fingers just kind of smash it and I don't need quite so long of a tail so I'm going to pull on that long end and then I know this part is hard to see but I'm going to separate the wires pull on it that way the wires are not twisted and then I'm going to go in with my crimping pliers into that second groove and give it a good smash. You can see there the wires are separated. That gives it the taco shape just like that. Turn it on its side and go into the first groove. Let's give it a good smash. And that gets it okay, but I like it to be even stronger. So I'm gonna go into that flat part on the end, give it the final smash. And that makes it nice and snug. So I'm gonna hold on to the jump ring on the end, grab my crimp cover, put it over the smashed crimp tube, and then flip it up. I'm gonna go in with a set of my chain nose pliers, give it a gentle smash, then I'm gonna go front to back, give it a gentle smash, make sure it gets that round shape. And that's how we start this strand. So now it's the order of the beads. I'm going to start with a four millimeter black pearl, a six millimeter jasper bead, bead cap facing up, eight millimeter bead cap facing down, and another six millimeter. So when I get to the other end, I'm gonna make sure everything that tail is tucked into everything. So just like that. And then I'm gonna repeat this two more times. All right, so here we go. And the only thing I added was one more black pearl on the end. So now we need to close it off. I'm gonna put on the crimp tube, and instead of a jump ring, I'm gonna use the twisted ring that came in the bead box. And then I'm gonna put the end through one end of the wire guardian and then wrap it around and put it through the other. So now we're gonna treat this twisted ring just like we would a jump ring and put it inside the wire guardian. And then we want to make sure both ends of the wire go through that crimp tube. And then I'm going to pinch that wire guardian closed with my fingers. And I'm going to send the end of that wire through the first couple of beads. All right. And then you grab the tail and pull it until it's nice and snug. Now you don't want to make it too tight. It definitely you definitely want it to be flexible so I like to move it a little bit you can't just pull it as tight as you can because then you won't have any movement in your necklace so make sure it moves a little bit but you want it snug it's got to be a nice balance then I'm gonna go in with my crimping pliers into that second divot give it a good smash that taco shape then turn it on its side go into that first divot give it another smash that makes it pretty good, but like I said, I like to go with that flat part on the end. Give it the final smash. Nice and snug. Still flexible. I'm going to take that crimp cover, put it right on top of that smashed crimp tube, and then flip it up. Go in with my chain nose pliers. Give it a gentle smash. And then I'm going to go front to back. Give it the round shape. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna go in with my cutters as close as I can get. Cut off the tail. Go in there with my nail and push it into that bead cap. And there we go. So now, we need a second one just like this. So we're gonna have one on this side and then we're gonna have one going up on the other side. So we will pause and make a second one and we will meet back up. All right. So now we have all of the parts and we are going to connect everything. So we're going to use the jump rings that are already on to connect both sides to the loop in the pendant. All right, so we're gonna take our jump ring, open it, put it through the loop, 
then close the jump ring. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now we have both sides connected to the pendant with the piece in between. And now we are going to add the chain to the other side of these soldered rings. So we're gonna take our jump ring, open it, put it around the ring, and we're going to put it around the last link in the chain, just like that. And close that jump ring. And do that same thing on the other side. All right, so now we have the chain on both sides. So now we're gonna use our so now we're going to use our last two jump rings to connect the clasp. Open the jump ring, connect it to the last link in the chain, just like that. And then we're going to connect it to the smaller loop in the hook and loop clasp. Then close that jump ring, open the last jump ring, connect it to the other last link, just like that and to the loop part of the hook and close that loop. So now we connect the hook and loop just like that and our piece is done. And so now I'm going to set this up on my display so that we can see it better. All right, so here it is. Here is the final product and I have to say I am super excited. I am a huge fan of this pendant and I think the embellishments on it just came out really really nice. It goes really well with that black onyx that's right in the center of that pendant and like I said at the beginning if you are interested in finding out more information about Dee Dee's bead box I will have all of the information in that description box below. I highly recommend that you go check it out. They have a wonderful website with so many high quality beads. And if you do go to the website and place an order, make sure you use my code. That code is Casey15, Casey15. That will give you 15% off your first order off of 90% of their website. So definitely go and check that out. So if you like this video and you want to see other videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and give me a like. Leave a comment. I would love to hear what you think of this necklace. I absolutely love reading my comments. You guys are so, so kind. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I definitely look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.